Hello, it's John Faulkner here in the southernmost outposts of South Lincolnshire. Hello. Hello, Bob. What can I do for you today? Tell me about meteor scatter, John. OK, Bob, I'm glad you asked. When a meteor, or meteoroid, to give it its correct name, enters the Earth's atmosphere, thankfully, it burns up. Otherwise, it would land on your head, Bob, and cause irreversible damage. Oh! As it burns, it creates a trail of ionisation, which acts as a mirror to radio signals at certain frequencies, in this case, VHF. Usually, radio signals carry on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in free space, but on the ground, they are quickly attenuated by hills, large buildings, trees, power stations, supermarkets, cows, washing machines, fridge freezers, toasters, food mixers, old computer monitors, paper clips, cans, paper dogs, cats, motorway rockers, So it's not a meteor then? Bob, let's get this clear. A meteor is a visible streak of light which goes whoosh right across the sky. How does it go? Whoosh! A meteoroid is a small piece of rock or metal which travels through space. Does that go whoosh? No. A meteorite... How does it go? Shut up. A meteorite is a piece of that meteoroid which has managed to get through the Earth's atmosphere and lands on your head. Not to be confused with Meteor, Wisconsin, which is a small town in the USA with a population of 170. Cool. Only the other day I was asked how I'm able to identify so many FM stations via Meteor Scatter. I thought I'd put together this video to demonstrate. Oh. Is there a trick? A key? A main ingredient? Well, I think it's safe to say that there is, and only a small part of this amazing reception would be possible without this very clever piece of software called RDS Spy. Available from rzspeed.com. And it's free! There is something of a learning curve involved with the setting up of RDS Spy as it requires an RDS signal to work. And getting that signal may not be quite so straightforward for some, depending on the receiving equipment used. I won't go into detail about that here, but standard audio from the phono outputs of your hi-fi tuner usually won't do it. You either need to extract a signal from the data and clock pins of the RDS chip inside your tuner, or hope that, for some reason, these data and clock signals are not filtered out by your tuner's discriminator circuit to get it back. Luckily for some, receivers such as the Kenwood KT6040 and KT6050 don't filter these signals, and you can take a feed from the standard phono outputs at the back of your tuner and feed this directly into RDS decoding software like RDS Spy. But that's another story. Modern SDR receivers make this much easier, but you need a sound card which supports a 192kHz sampling rate, or another piece of software such as Virtual Audio Cable, which I use. There are others such as VB Cable, V-Audio, Soundflower and Jack Audio. As long as they support a 192kHz sampling rate, then Bob's your uncle. (laughs) Not you. And RDS Spy needs this sampling rate in order to decode RDS. The EE LAD FDMS2 has its own half-decent RDS decoder, but it's not quite as sensitive as RDS Spy. This Easter weekend, we conducted a listening exercise on the Skywaves DX forum, in which a group of us monitored the same part of the FM band at the same time for a couple of hours. We had a member in South Africa, one in Spain, and several in the UK, all simultaneously recording a chunk of the FM band to see what we might receive. Now, we have a rather unusual situation in the UK at the moment. There's this man called Boris who says we can't go out anywhere. So I kind of got caught up at my girlfriend's farm here in South Lincolnshire, in the South Holland district, some 44 miles away from my home in Skegness. So I am self-oscillating due to her 90-year-old parents also living here. Movement and travel is forbidden, as you will know. However, I managed to get a couple of Triax FM5 antennas from home, and I have installed them on a 30-foot telescopic mast with Fringe Electronics 20 dB masthead amplifiers. As you can see here, both antennas are mounted on the same boom, a small modification that I made a few years ago, and one which works extremely well with each antenna not affecting the performance of the other. I just throw a switch in the studio to swap antennas antenna, and 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 what are they called? Antennas. Thanks, Bob. For the purpose of this listening exercise, I used the horizontal FM5 and beamed due east. The FDM S2 receiver was set to auto record the period overnight, so when I awoke, I used the file analyzer software of the superb SDR console suite provided by Simon Brown at sdr-radio.com. As you will see, I have set the FDM S2 to record files thus. There are four sessions in this timer, 0500 to 0600, 0600 to 0700, and so on. The reference to 90.4 sets the recorded 6 MHz bandwidth center frequency, giving a recorded spectrum of 87.5 to 93.3. Here you can see the resulting files in my chosen computer directory. 
Next, I run SDR console. Then I activate File Analyzer by clicking on View and Data File Analyzer here on the right. Next, I click New to scan the first hour of my recorded files. Here you will see each of the four one-hour sessions. Clicking on the first one here, a window opens up, bing, where I set the desired parameters which will produce a pretty waterfall image which will highlight any meteor bursts I happen to catch. Just make sure that the complete session is captured here. Note the start and finish times, then make sure that the update rate is set to maximum, in this case 20,000, which will give more detail in the waterfall. Clicking OK will then create a very detailed waterfall of the section of the band you recorded. The morning of the 12th of April was indeed a good morning for Meteor Scatter. Here you can see the signals which I regularly receive. Note the shorter blips and bursts. These are Meteor Scatter bursts. Wow! By hovering my mouse over them, I can see the approximate time they were received and the frequencies. Back to the FDM-S2 now for the listening. The reason I use the FDM-S2 is because this can be hooked up to RDS Spy for that ultra-sensitive decoding. Even the weakest of signals can sometimes be accurately decoded using RDS Spy. Checking the details in File Analyzer, I then load the relevant file into the FDMS2 and create a loop around the respective burst. Look what happens! Shut up. As you can see, during good conditions there are lots and 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 lots of bursts and you can see how easy it is to create a huge logbook of really interesting meteor catches. Just take a look at these! This is John Faulkner in South Lincolnshire wishing you all good DX. And Bob. And Bob. Bye! Bye! Why are you boiling water in that saucepan? It's for your head, Bob. Don't make me choose. I wanna feel the way that we There's just some things that never change. You say we're just friends.